Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Thursday, August the 20th, and it is day 19 of 21 days of prayer and fasting. We are almost at the end, believe it or not. Um, I don't know about you guys. This one's gone uh, pretty fast for me. Good morning, Miss Adelia. Um, morning, Miss Lauren and, and girls, I'm sure. Um, but uh, this, this seems like this one has gone faster for me. We're only a few days away uh, from the ending here. And um, I want to say congratulations for those of you guys that have been working, plowing through and being here a part of prayer um, and in your fasting and a praying that God continues to um, speak to each one of you guys. Good morning, Miss Carrie, Carolyn, see you guys. Krista, good to see everybody this morning. <clears throat> Miss Kathy at all, I'm sure. Um, but I uh, want to um, jump into uh, today's prayer focus and um, if you if you follow along in your guide, today's prayer focus is actually my freedom. And just as a reminder, good morning, Miss Misty. It's always good. Uh, good morning, Miss Mia. Proud of you, teenager, getting up at five in the morning to do this. Um, always important for us to go back and remember what is the strategy of how we do what we do. Vision leaks, and we've got to remind ourselves why we do what we do. So at Church of the Lakes, uh, we we have a strategy, and our strategy is that. People would know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. And so really today's prayer focus, being my freedom, kind of finds itself in that um, finding freedom category. And we often talk about finding freedom really comes through relationship, and it comes through relationship with others. We need each other to do that. So uh, we're going to need each other uh, as we kind of work on this part. But today it says that our prayer focus is my freedom, that's personal freedom, and deliverance and breakthrough uh, in areas of my life and in every area of my life. So that led me to uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 37. So let me read this to you. Good morning, Mr. Lynn. Um, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine would burst the wineskins spilling the wine and ruining the skins. I've read this verse a million times, but that little phrase right there stood out to me uh, just a few minutes ago uh, before I came on because uh, spilling the wine and ruining the skin because you are the skin and God's spirit is the wine. And if you're not prepared and his spirit tries to pour into an unprepared vessel, It'll spill the wine. In other words, it'll be wasted and it'll ruin the skin. In other words, um, actually could be more detrimental to us if we're not prepared. Um, but it goes on, spilling the wine and ruining the skin. New wine must be stored in, <coughs> excuse me, new wineskins. So new wine and old wineskin just doesn't work. Old wineskins cannot grow and stretch to hold new wine. The new wine that God wants to pour, of course, is a, a picture of God's spirit. And uh, new wine is expansive. As it ferments, it expands, which is why it requires a new container because it needs to be able to stretch. An old container, it doesn't stretch. It's dry. It's old. Um, and so a container that is dry and stiff cannot be trusted to hold the treasure that God has within his spirit. When we start thinking that through, and in, in thinking of ourselves. So 21 days of prayer and fasting is really about preparing our hearts to contain the new that God wants to pour into us. And so it requires, here we go, a cleaning out of the old hurts, habits, and hangups that we, that we are able to receive God's spirit, catch this, in a new in a fresh way and see it in a new way and receive it in a new way. God's new wine always changes us by expanding our faith, enlarging our purpose, and renewing our vision. So as we seek him in this season, in this 21 days of prayer and fasting, we've got to consider what it means for us to shed old wineskins, um, to ask God to fully prepare our hearts for what is to come. Otherwise, we just run around the same mountain. And I'm sure every single one of us, including me, have done that exact thing. We have um, 
gone to some service, gone to a retreat, gone to an amazing weekend, and we've got this fire. I'm pumped. I'm fired. I mean, I want what God has for me, and I want new and all this. But some of the problem with that is, is that we want new, but do we want new enough to get rid of the old? Um, and that's that's where kind of the fork hits the grits in, in this whole little scenario. Um, that is, it's really important for us to understand there's, there's a little bit of work for us to do. And sometimes we get caught in um, what people would call the prosperity gospel. We get caught up in the, the hype of, man, I want all God has for me and I want new and I want, you know, blah, 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 that, that whole deal. Um, but hear me, hear me on this. Um, it's going to take a little work. It's going to take a little bit of cleaning out. It's going to take a little bit um, of a struggle for us to do this. C.S. Lewis wrote this quote. This quote I found was amazing. God became a man to turn creatures into sons, not simply to produce better men of the old kind, but to produce a new kind of man. And so most of us want new wine. Most people say they're ready for God to do something new um, until the new requires getting rid of the old. And then there's a phrase that we um, seem to love, and it's, yeah, but. Right? So forgive me, I'm going to get a little preachy for just a moment. Um, so put your seatbelt on. But we get into the yeah, but, and we have excuses for the habits that we have. And the addictions that we have and the things that we continue to hold on to. And so today, if we're going to pray for our freedom, I felt the Holy Spirit just kind of stirred me. I think there's a bunch of us that have prayed for freedom. We've probably prayed that prayer a bunch of times. You know, God help me to, I want new, I want something you to do something new in my life and all. But the problem is, is there's still the old that we're holding on to. And so I don't think we can pray for freedom and for the new, unless we're also willing to address the old and, and address habits and address those struggles. That drew me to uh, 1 Samuel 15, which is actually Samuel talking to Saul. If you remember the story, Saul was just a, a lousy king because he wanted things the way he wanted. He didn't want to do it the way God wanted. That's why David was a man after his own heart. Saul was completely different. And so Samuel says these words to Saul that I think God would say to us. I mean, I know this is Old Testament. This was geared towards him, but, but I still think we can see the heart of God in this. And Samuel says this, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. And submission is better than offering the fat of rams. And man, when I looked at that, what, what the Spirit said to me that we needed to address this morning is we cannot do 21 days of prayer and fasting and expect that to be the like fix all. Like because I did 21 days, because I got up every day at 5 a.m., <clears throat> excuse me, and, 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 and was sacrificial in this, that, you know, God's going to bless and God's going to give me new. Wait, wait, wait. What is it in the obedience above and beyond the sacrifice? Because it says here that obedience is better than sacrifice. So let me challenge you this morning. If we're going to really pray for freedom, if we're going to really pray that God pours new wine, it's going to require each of us being painfully honest, being really um, transparent, coming to a place of going, this is something in my life that has to go. And so I wanna just kinda look dead into the camera and look at you this morning and ask you a question. Maybe something that you have thought about giving up or given up for 21 days of prayer needs to still happen on 22 and 23 and 24. Maybe I need to shift and 
Or maybe I need to start today with something that has nothing to do with 21 days that I need to carry on. Let me challenge you. If you're going to pray for freedom today, <clears throat> don't just pray for the new wine. Because let's go back to the verse. What did it say it said that stuck out to me? If you put the new wine into the old wineskin, the old wineskin will burst, spilling the wine. It'll be wasted. I wonder how often we've done that, that God's wanted to pour something into us or has said, okay, I'll give you what you asked, but the old wineskin wasn't prepared and it was sort of for naught. And so we have these emotional moments in a service, these emotional moments in a, a women's retreat or a men's retreat or an acquire the fire with youth or summer camp. We have these emotional moments but it doesn't stick. Anybody else ever been there? Okay, you go have the, the big high of the thing. And I think that's because we pray for new wine, but the, we, we've not gotten rid of and prepared a new wineskin. So what is that for you? So if we're really going to pray for real freedom, if we're going to really pray for real deliverance today, I think it's got to start with God, show me what the old wineskin is. And give me courage to get rid of it. Give me strength to walk away. Give me strength to put it down, whatever that is, whatever that particular. And I believe the Holy Spirit's talking to each one individually today and, and ones later today who are watching this video, the Holy Spirit will tell you and speak to you. And he's putting his finger on something particular, maybe right now, that is, you know what? That, that, has, that has to go. That, that old wineskin has to go for God's spirit, not just to be poured out, but for it to be useful and productive in my life and in what's going on inside of me. And so I really want to follow up that and challenge you. It is by no accident because we believe freedom comes in relationship with other people. James 5 and 16, pray for one another, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Healing comes through each other. So it's no accident that two weeks after 21 days of prayer ends, small groups start. We all need each other. Uh, we all need to call each other's stuff out in a safe place, right? We need accountability. And so let me, let me, let me encourage you. <clears throat> A couple thoughts. I'll pray and close. Let me encourage you. If you really want freedom, Real freedom, not an emotional moment that makes you feel goosebumps, but true transformation, right? It's going to start with a heart that says, yes, I want new wine. It's then going to move to a heart that says, you know what? I'll do whatever it takes to get rid of old wine. And then I'm going to recognize I can't do it by myself. It has to be in relationship with others. It has to be with accountability and people around me, and so that's why we do small groups. So let me push you to get in a small group or call me and say, I want to host a small group. You've got to form relationships to help us walk through this. And so this is obedience. So, man, as you pray today, I've given you kind of a lot to process, but I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit speaks individually to you about specific areas and about specific relationship and about small groups and accountability and the relationships that you have today. So, so let's don't just pray for new wine. Let's make sure that the vessel is prepared so that if we'll do that. Now, on the other side of that, that's pretty heavy and that's kind of preachy. But on the other side of that, God wants to do some crazy, amazing things with our lives. He's got some crazy ideas, right? Um, immeasurably more than you can think or imagine. But it's going to take that work on our part, not to just desire new wine, but to also get rid of old wineskins. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for the challenge this morning. And uh, we, we ask for courage and strength and wisdom that you would show us old wineskins, old habits, old thought processes, things that we continue to go back to that are addictions that are things that we use as crutches and sources instead of you for comfort um, or, or just 
whatever we use of this world to make us feel better. God, that, that we would learn to lean on you. And so for each individual, I just pray strength and courage right now uh, to face what needs to be faced. There's not a one of us that's not hurting, that doesn't have some kind of crazy dysfunction inside of us. And so right now we're just real and raw with you to say, put your finger on it and give us courage then to address it. Give us great relationships, whether it be through small group or uh, as we volunteer or in places that we have a relationship to address it, to find healthy places where we can be accountable, we can get rid of old wine skins, that you might be able to pour your spirit into us and we see the new immeasurably more than we can think or imagine ideas that you have for each one of our lives. And so God, give us courage to do what you've challenged us to do today. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love each one of you. Uh, that's a heavy challenge, uh, but take some time. Uh, listen to the Holy Spirit. Find some people that you can get around you that will help you to get rid of the old wineskins and just, just wait and see what God will do with it. Have a great day.